Manifest in Jordan stream, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and king of wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest. Best in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill, anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Sun and moon shall darken thee, 
stars shall fall, the heavens shall flee. Christ will then like lightning shine. All will see his glorious sign. All will then the trumpet hear. All will see the judge appear. Then I all will be confessed. God in man made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou that we may become like thee at thy great epiphany and may praise thee ever blessed God in man made manifest. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to, I invite you to stand. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord, is Isaiah chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel may be gathered to him, For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The epistle for the second Sunday after the Epiphany is uh, St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I invite you please to be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, uh, Lutheran Service Book, page 702. up to thee, thou Lamb of 
Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy. impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee, pure, warm, and changeless be, a living fire. While life's dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread, be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day Wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this Sunday is the gospel for today. John 1, 29 through 42a. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. This is our text. How many of you think it's a helpful thing to use your index finger to point at things. Maybe most, most especially at things, but pointing at people. Uh, I, as a child, I, I always, that was one thing that frustrated me because my mother said, don't point. 
And uh, I, I think maybe any, anybody that, that probably points, uh, uh, they're, they're told it is impolite to point. Uh, but what is, a, what is an index finger for? Uh, you, may, you might find some interesting alternatives to that. Maybe use your, your fist, and, and, or maybe, may, this is probably better, if you use your hand, you're sort, of, you're sort of presenting something, or maybe you might make a gesture in that generation, in, in that general uh, direction. But it is considered bad manners to point. There is a uh, rear dose, it's called a rear dose, that's a technical name for a picture that is painted and placed over an altar, and, and perhaps in my previous sermon I might have mentioned it, but I'm sure that uh, all of the pastors that, that uh, uh, in, in our synod within the last uh, 10, 20 years have mentioned this particular picture that depicts the event of, of our gospel this morning where you have Jesus and you have John the Baptist and John the Baptist is pointing to Jesus with a finger that is about twice the size and scale of the, the way that uh, the finger should be on the hand of John the Baptist in the picture. And the Bible doesn't say he pointed to Jesus. It does say that he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And as a picture is worth a thousand words, you might say that the purpose of it is that you could see what John was doing even though you couldn't hear his voice, even though perhaps maybe if they had the technology, they could have a moving picture with John saying, Behold the Lamb of God without being so rude to point. But what's interesting is that John says that the whole purpose of his ministry is to do something that is in keeping with what Epiphany is all about. I've been uh, uh, charged, I have been given a, a, a task by God himself that I am supposed to reveal the Savior to the nation by baptizing with water. And indeed, that is uh, basically what, uh, what John did was to really... Uh, preach the law. Maybe he did a lot of finger pointing. You brood of vipers, or, or you, uh, uh, you who say you are children of Abraham. And, and of course, uh, you might say that uh, by pointing to Jesus, he is, he is doing what is important in his position. He was, of course, uh, that, uh, as I said, you know, maybe you've seen one of those uh, early posters for World War II where they had uh, Uncle Sam. Uh, you know, at first when Uncle Sam was pictured, he was a young man in, in the beginning of our nation, but then he kind of got old. And he points to the person looking at the picture, I want you uh, to serve in the U.S. Army. Forty years ago when I graduated from seminary, uh, there was the legendary... Uh, pastor of the largest church in our synod, the Reverend Dr. Guido Merkins, who uh, it was a, I think his church was in Austin, Texas, which uh, was the, the largest church in the synod, some 3,000 baptized members. The second largest was across the Missouri River in, in St. Charles, Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Anyway, uh, Dr. Merkins, of course, probably preached one sermon about a million times probably. He preached it twice within a, a, the same week. Uh, he preached it for when we received our diplomas of vocation, and he also preached it to the Missouri District Convention. And, and it began with uh, him telling the story of this uh, doomsday prophet in, in a big city and in a public area that went around pointing the finger at, at, at anybody and saying, guilty, guilty. He also, uh, of course, wanted to sound like Billy Graham, so he added that. And for emphasis, of course. And in doing that, he was showing what God's law does in finding a sinner. The law doesn't fail to find a sinner. And in a sense, it has the boldness, or shall we say, the unpleasantness of pointing at us. You know the story, though, too, about pointing. If you point with one finger pointing away from you, you've got three fingers that are pointing back toward you. The law of God, of course, says guilty. 
uh, condemned in the eyes of God. We have not fulfilled what God demanded for us. And then, of course, that was um, basically what John's ministry was, was really to find the sinners. You know, he wasn't, you know, he kind of got himself in trouble, didn't he? Because he happened to call uh, King Herod uh, Agrippa a sinner, and, and Herod was the, the king, uh, the, the tetrarch, and put him in prison and ultimately beheaded him. Uh, because he was faithful to his call as, and, and, and often that is true too of the pastor. The pastor uh, is, is kind of like in the hot seat, perhaps if he has to tell his flock sometimes that they are sinners. Of course, he should probably point the finger at himself as well. The pointing finger of God's law should shake us up because it is a serious matter that it brings, up, brings to our attention. That it is not only pain or it is not only uh, discrimination or climate change or ignorance or inflation, but it is sin that we're involved in. That's the thing that God wants us to realize that is a serious problem with us as people. Because as the prophet Isaiah says, writes in his prophecy, your sins have made a separation between you and your God. But people nowadays, of course, they say, well, come on, get off it. You know, uh, you know sin is only what you think it is. Sin isn't that much of a problem. And of course, that's the, the manner of the devil. The devil wants us to see that sin is, is something that is, 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 is merely a matter of opinion and that you can live a life of sin in this world. And if you call somebody a sinner, you are discriminating against them. I, I've never seen such a situation in, in recent years where you have a society that calls what is sin, what is good, and what is good, they call sin. And of course, there is the stark reality that the soul that sins shall die, not only physical death, but also eternal death. You know, what that, of course, is what the Christian religion is for, to deal with the biggest enemy that you have. And I can tell you on the basis of God's word that the, most, uh, the worst enemy that you have is sin. The final enemy, of course, is death. The soul that sins shall die. But the comfort comes from what John the Baptist said. Even though he was a fire and brimstone preacher of the law and, and in a sense pointed to his listeners as sinners, that he turns his index finger toward Jesus and points to him. That is, of course, what God does. God takes our sins, uh, you know, doesn't blame us for them, but he turns them and places them on Jesus. And that, of course, is in, in, point, in, the, in the pointing toward Jesus is an act of the gospel. It's an act that inspires your faith and trust because Jesus has done that. He has taken away the sin of the world. That's, that's a passage of Scripture that should comfort the hearts of anyone who's ever has committed a sin. And the message of the gospel is your sins are forgiven because God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against them. They counted them against Jesus. So Jesus becomes the only sinner that there is. When we trust in Jesus... We no longer are sinners in the sight of God, according to his gospel. We are forgiven. Jesus is the one that takes away our sins. Sort of illustrated by the psalmist who said, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Or the prophet, uh, one of the prophets say that all of our sins are drowned in the depths of the sea. Those of us who trust in Jesus, you know, we're not going to have a hard day on the day of judgment because all he will say to us is, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation 
of the world. For you kept my law in the life and ministry, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about pointing again, because there is that pointing of the gospel which is not rude, it's not bad manners. <laughs> Martin Luther wrote a very beautiful Easter hymn. It's called, Christ Jesus Lay in Death's Strong Bonds. And in that particular hymn, he kind of says that our life in Christ is like the life of the children of Israel in Egypt when they sacrificed the Passover and, and they took the blood of the Passover and painted it on the, the top part, the lintel and the doorposts of their doors. And then God, uh, or rather the death, passed over them. The hymn goes this way. See his blood doth mark our door. Faith points to it. Death passes o'er, and Satan cannot harm us. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All your sins were laid on Jesus and taken away so that you might trust in him alone that God counts you righteous in his sight. He points to Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Let's follow the two disciples' example. You know, when you are pointed out somebody that cares for you and loves you as much as Jesus loves you, then you want to spend as much time with him as you possibly can. And he loves it when you pray. He loves it when you open your Bible and take the time to be close to him by hearing his word. And the purpose of that word is to cause you to grow in your faith. You want to be with him as much as possible. And there is comfort, too. You know, it's important for us to remember that uh, we want to uh, confess all of our sins to God. I remember hearing a, um, a Bible study on, on KFUO Radio where uh, my teacher, Dr. Norman Nagel, said... Um, that, you know, if people have certain sins that they don't want to give up, and, and, and believe me, there's some sins that, you know, the devil uh, likes you to think is, are, are something that you really don't want to part with. Uh, you, you know, it, it's something, maybe it's my desire to point. Maybe that's a sin that I need to confess. But anyway, if you want to hold on to your sins, those sins are not forgiven. When you confess your sins to God, you should hold nothing back. God, I confess all sins to you, even the ones I don't know about. And the forgiveness that he gives is not measured by how many sins you, you confess. That was one of the beauties of, of the uh, Reformation, was that when, you're, when the forgiveness of sins is spoken to you by the called minister of Christ that does it publicly, that that is a forgiveness which is boundless and pure and it forgives you all it gives you the forgiveness of all of your sins because the gospel is never about measuring it's always an inexhaustible fountain of God's love and grace that washes us pure of our sins and brings us close to Jesus don't neglect to follow him don't neglect to be one of his beloved sheep. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. And now we stand and we confess our most holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation 
came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we remember our beloved president of the congregation who will undergo surgery this Wednesday uh, and we pray that God would grant that that surgery may go forward and that it may have a successful uh, conclusion. Also, those on our hearts, uh, shut-ins, and those that are ill. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of your dear Son and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us that with good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth the fruits of faith. We humbly implore you to rule and govern your church throughout the world. Bless all those who proclaim your truth that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of your saving word and that faith in you may be strengthened, love toward others increased, and your kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those whom you have sent that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people and the gospel preached in all the world. Grant health and prosperity to all who are in authority especially to the President of the United States, the Congress of the United States, the Governor of the State of Missouri, and the Legislature, and to all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant them grace to rule according to your good pleasure for the maintenance of our righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. According to your good pleasure, turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries from their, that they may cease their hostilities and walk with us in meekness and in peace. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity. Grant courage and steadfastness, especially to those who suffer for your name's sake, that they may receive and accept their afflictions in the confidence that you will acknowledge them as your own. Heavenly Father, we pray that this Wednesday you will be with your servant, Michael Pauloon, as, as he undergoes surgery. We pray that the surgery may go forward and that the result will be um, healing for him. Grant skill 
and, and uh, ability to the surgeon and to the doctors and nurses that care for, for him. And we're thankful for these, these folks that, uh, in a sense, do your hand of, of uh, healing and, and help. Although you are the great physician, and so we uh, commit him to your tender care. We also ask that you would look in on and bless those who are members who are in need of our prayers, Angie, Michael, Darcy, Sarah, Celia, Sophia, Jane, Harry, Anne, Robin, Don, Kathy, Marilyn, Tom, Sharon, Cindy, Missy, Don, Renee, Emily, Bernadette, George, Inez, Mel, Bonnie, Dee, Dan, Billy, uh, Stefan, Doug, Ruth Ann, Carol, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, uh, Vera, Ruth Ann, Judy, Dee, and those whom we name silently in our hearts. Grant us our prayers in the name of our dear Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. We follow the service of the sacrament on page 13 uh, or on, on your, in your bulletin at the appropriate place. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God, of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. Beloved in Christ, welcome to the Lord's table this day. Take, eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, drink, this is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May this strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Peace be with you. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved in Christ, welcome to the Lord's table this day. And now take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May his true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in joy and peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen.
beloved in Christ, welcome to the Lord's table this day. And now take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Do you, do you receive the sacrament? No. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be, in, be with you and keep you in his tender care. Remember your baptism. And now take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you. May this, oh, not yet. Okay, I'm sorry. May this strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in joy and peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, before we uh, sing our final hymn, I'd like to uh, uh, bring to your um, attention that, uh, you know, this is the time now to uh, complete the uh, entry of your attendance here at church, uh, either on, online, or of course you have to maybe wait, wait till you get home to do that, uh, or in the forms that are in the back of the church. Um, may, uh, now may the Lord uh, dismiss us with his blessing as we sing together uh, the people that in darkness sat in our bulletin, uh, Lutheran Service Book 412. The people that in darkness set a glorious light have seen. The light has shined on them who long in shades of death have been. In shades of death have been. To hail the Son of Righteousness, the gathering nations come. They joy as when the reapers bear their harvest treasures home. Their harvest treasures home. To us a child of hope is born, to us a son is given, and on his shoulder ever rests all power in earth and heaven.